Hi again everyone, I'm Ollie Matthews. This is the Narcissistic Resistance and this resistance video is a sponsored video sponsored by Anonymous for Brianna and this is Brianna from the Narcissist Recording, the Instagram filter mother. So if you remember that one, here is a story. Hello Ollie, before I get into what I want to tell you today, I thought I would give you some clarification from the last video you did for me. In regards to all the cars, they are all my golden child brother's cars. He has like five of them and none of them work. But my golden child brother is a whole other, whole other story. The Snapchat filter that she had in her pick was one I set for her on my phone. I made her picture something very silly so that whenever she calls or texts me, I can be reminded of who and what she is. There is also nothing wrong with kids helping their parents clean the house. I do as much as I can, including paying 150 for rent and 130 for the internet bill. So I don't only help her by taking care of my sister and my dogs, clean the house, but I also help out financially. I don't even have a job and I just get a check, one check a month and I do what I can. While my golden child brother has a job and pays nothing and still begs his mommy for lunch money. The next email I send you will most likely be about him. I hope that was enough clarification. Now on to what I want to talk about today. Oh, my name is on, oh and my name is on the lease your video made me realize how she cannot live without me when this whole time i thought it was the other way around today i was getting ready and i was thinking about my hair recently i've started wearing wigs just for fun and also because i want my hair to grow out and leaving it in braids and just throwing on a wig will help it grow out when i wear them my mom first made fun of me and then started talking about wearing the costume wigs she has the costume wig she has she will always make fun of me and then try to copy me the wigs also gave me a little break from my natural hair my hair is very thick and curly and hard to manage when i was little i remember my mom doing my hair and yanking at it this one time she detangled my whole head and when she was done i turned around and saw a pile of my hair i was surprised there was any left there was, there was any left on my head. I would cry and scream and she would smile and laugh at me and tell me to shut up. She made me feel like being half black was my fault or something. I mean, I had the same, well, I'm Armenian, so I have. My mother would just, my hair would not, and she would just rip through it, like rip through my fucking hair. It was horrendous. When I was in middle school, I started to straighten my hair. I thought it ma I made myself look more white than maybe she would approve of me. But whenever I did have it straight, she would just give me a stank look and remind me how that it's not my natural hair. And she would point out every little wave I might have missed in my head. If I wore my natural hair, though, she would say how I look like a bush bitch and how I needed a bone in my nose. I, even, I thought even if I straighten my hair, I am still not white. And then if I wear it natural, I look too black for her. And this is the problem that, mo that a lot of mixed race kids have. Because they resent, they resent, they, especially the white and white mothers, they come to resent the children. They, they resent the daughters. They resent the mixed race daughters. Now as an adult, I don't care what she thinks. I wear my hair, thinks I wear my hair or wig and I look how I want to. As a child, through all this really, as a child though, all this really destroyed me. It took me years to get to know where I, where I will wear my natural hair out. But back then, there was no way I would leave the house with it. She would also make me insecure about things. My nose, my lips. I hated my nose for years because it was too wide. And my lips because they were too big. Yeah, my uh, listen, my mother would do the same thing to me. Because my mother raised me like a girl. She'd tell me I have, you know, you know N-word hair and N-word lips. 
And when I was in the summertime, when I was a kid, I'd get black. I'd be call me a little uh, little end baby. She says how they all look like dogs. Oh, wait. My mom still makes jokes about black women. She says how they all look like dogs and they have ugly hair and things like that. Well, she likes black men enough, right? See, this white woman, black woman fight. I mean, it's a woman-on-woman thing. And... I don't know if this is exactly racism or her being jealous or even her still trying to make me insecure and hate part of it myself. I don't even know anymore. I wrote this to get this out there and also to let other people know they are not alone. This isn't okay. And if I can learn to love myself, you can too. Let me know your thoughts on this, Ollie. So much. Thank you so much for reading this and thank you to the sponsor. Much love, Brianna. <clears throat> You know, I'm, I'm, I'm on two, two trains of thoughts here with the race thing with the mother, with your mother. A, your mother's always in competition with you. And your mother, on one hand, needs you because she's living off your money, your, the cable bills in your name, the, the rent you're paying, half the, you're paying the, half the rent in the house, your name's on the lease. On the other hand, this is the plight of mixed race children especially mixed race children uh, where the parents aren't together anymore. Because you are a constant reminder of these black women she feels she's in competition with. You are a constant reminder or God forbid she see, she meets a white guy now, I don't know what your mother's into if your mother dates only exclusively black men, white guys. But here's another element, and this is what you're going to have to consider here. Your mother might be bitter with her because there are plenty of white guys that won't mess with her, that won't date her, that they'll, they'll have sex with her, but they won't get involved with a long-term relationship knowing she has a mixed-race kid, knowing that there's some... That's a reality, and that's part of it is racism. She sees you, it's possible she sees you as, as a hindrance, and she probably did, and she might have growing up, as a hindrance of her to be able to marry a white guy. Now, I don't know. I don't know what your mother dates, and I'm because you're giving me very limited information here. But I'm telling you, you being a mixed race and dealing with the mixed race people I've dealt with, it's, it, it's one or two things. She sees what she can't compete with. She either sees what she can't compete with in you. Or you represent a hindrance to her getting, I don't know how she feels about your dad. I don't know what, what her deal is going forward. But I've seen a lot of women who've had a, a child, white women especially, white women who've had a child with a black man and then they regret it because they look at that child almost like a scarlet letter and that's ra that's the racism that's where the racism you might be feeling come is coming in now i'm not i'm not excusing that i'm just kind of telling you what your options could possibly be here it's either and it could be both it could be on one hand well i can't even get a white guy now and on the other hand, I can't even get a decent black guy now. And now you represent what what these other black what she's competing against. If she's still if she's still trying to date black guys, I don't know. Like I care. I, I don't care. Like date whoever you want to date. I don't care. I'm trying to get inside your mother's head and trying to give you some perspective of why she's treating you the way she does. It's one or the one or the other. And it could be a combination of of both so but your plight being a mixed race one female is not all that uncommon from other mixed race females so 
understand. Whichever one it is, it's not good for you, Brianna. And you need to separate from this entire situation ASAP. So I hope that helps. Thank you so much for another story. And thank you to Anonymous for sponsoring. I really appreciate it. Thank you to everybody watching. Please leave any opinions or advice in the comment section below. And again, if you want your story read on the channel, you have a topic you'd like me to cover, a narcissist you'd like to expose, you'd like to set up Skype, a phone call, have a private video made or a Facebook live chat, or you'd like to sponsor a video like this for someone who needs help and can't afford it, or just make a contribution to the channel in general to keep it supported, growing, and successful because this channel survives 100% on contributions from all of you. Without you guys, all this goes away. So if you like what you see here and you want to see more videos like this, you know what to do with the PayPal and email links in the description box. Also, please like and share this video wherever you can. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't. And be sure to click the subscription bell to be notified of all my video uploads. I'm Ollie Matthews. This has been The Narcissistic Resistance.